the spinal cord and transmission of nerve impulse. The second and the most important part of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. The spinal cord, major nerve tract of vertebrates, extends from the base of the brain through the canal of the spinal or vertebral column. A cross section of spinal cord reveals that gray matter lies inside and the white matter on the outer side of the spinal cord. The gray matter is composed of neuron cell bodies and in a cross-sectional cut it appears as a dark stained H-shaped central area. The white matter contains axons running longitudinally to and from the brain and even crossing from one side to the other. There is a central canal which runs the entire length and is continuous with the cavities of the brain. The spinal cord is divided into cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral and the coccygeal regions. Eight cervical segments transmit signals from or to the areas of the head, neck, shoulders, arms and hands. Twelve thoracic segments transmit signals from or to the part of the arms and the anterior and posterior chest and abdominal areas. Five lumbar segments transmit signals from or to the legs and feet and some pelvic organs. Five sacral segments transmit signals from or to the lower back, pelvic organs, genital areas and some areas in the legs and feet. The coccygeal remnant is located at the bottom of the spinal cord. The spinal cord helps in connecting the various organs of human body to the brain. On one hand, it accepts the electrical information through sensory neurons and sends it to the brain. While on the other hand, it sends the signals from the motor area of the brain back to the various parts of the body. Yet another function of spinal cord is to coordinate various reflexes in our body. Apart from neurons, brain and the spinal cord, nerves are also important structures because they carry impulses to and from the brain. There are two structures present in nerves, receptors and effectors. Receptors are structures at the ends of the nerve fibers that collect the information to be conducted by the nerves and send to the central nervous system. Nerves in turn conduct these impulses from the central nervous system and send them to the effectors which are muscles or glands which work in response to the stimulus received from the brain. The first type is a sensory nerve which contains sensory fibers that bring impulses from the receptors to the brain and the spinal cord. For example, optic nerve arising from eyes and ending in the brain. The second type is motor nerve which contains only motor fibers carrying impulses from the brain or the spinal cord to effector organs to bring them into action. For example, a facial nerve arising from the brain. The third type of a nerve is mixed nerve, which carries both sensory and motor fibers. For example, a glossopharyngeal nerve. Of the many kinds of neural activities, there is one simple kind in which a stimulus leads to an immediate action known as reflex action. A reflex action is an involuntary and nearly instantaneous movement in response to a stimulus. Reflex actions enable the body to give back quick responses to harmful stimuli so that chances of damage to body are decreased 
and they also prevent overloading of the brain. A reflex action must be quick to have value. Therefore, the pathway for receiving and sending information must be short. The anatomical pathway of a reflex is called the reflex arc. The nerve cell dendrites respond to a stimulus and convert it into an impulse in a sensory neuron. The nerve impulse from a receptor passes through an axon terminal of the sensory neuron in the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, the sensory impulse generates an outgoing motor impulse by an association between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron. Motor neuron then carries an impulse to the effector organs like a muscle or a gland. Let us now learn how is a nerve impulse transmitted. In the normal or resting condition, the outer side of the nerve fiber carries positive charge. This is called polarized state or the resting potential which is due to more sodium ions outside the axon membrane. On stimulation the axon membrane at that point becomes excited and becomes permeable to sodium ions which move inwards and the nerve is then in a depolarized state or the action potential. The point of depolarization becomes the stimulus to the neighboring region, also making it depolarized. Meanwhile, the previous area becomes repolarized due to the active transport of sodium ions again to the outside. So this alternate depolarization and repolarization of neuron causes transmission of nerve impulse. This nerve impulse is then transferred from one neuron to the other neuron by the process called synapse. It is a point of contact between the axon terminal of one neuron known as presynaptic neuron and the dendrites of another neuron called postsynaptic neuron. Both these neurons are separated by a synaptic cleft. As soon as the nerve impulse reaches the axon terminals of a depolarized presynaptic neuron, a neurotransmitter, acetylcholine, is released in the synaptic cleft. It diffuses rapidly and binds itself to the receptors of the dendrites of postsynaptic neuron, causing depolarization of the postsynaptic neurons, and a nerve impulse is then transmitted. The central nervous system integrates countless bits of information and generates appropriate reactions to various stimuli. Together with the peripheral nervous system, it plays a fundamental role in controlling behavior.